So, we already have gotten pretty far. We started writing a miniature version of Quill. We've created the ability to quote something. We've created the ability to take that thing and to return it back out. Now, we wrote a primitive parser that parses a few different kinds of constructs. We can actually uh, get some comments here that we left from last time, but what we did was we said, okay, we have the ability to parse a DSL that we've written. So here's the DSL. We created the DSL. The DSL right now is pretty limited. Um, let's see. It has the ability to do... Where did we actually define this thing? No, here we go. Right, it has the ability to create a query for a given type. Now, once you actually return this thing, you can call a couple of different things on it. We've started... Div define the things that you can call. So we actually tested this out. We said, okay, let's uh, let's do let's do a filtration. Let's actually change this to, let's say, um, so we, we used a filtration on a Boolean property because if we're not, if it's not a Boolean property, we have to do something like equal equal to Joe and we don't have that implemented yet. That's a binary operator. Um, so we've got to do that. So instead we're using something that's Boolean. Let's just change this to something interesting like is sober. All right, something like that. And then we have, so basically we kick off writing our, um, writing our macro. And then taking the result of this, right? This is the quotation. What is quote? Well, quote is this thing right here. Right? Quote is a macro. And as we've seen, or as we've written, what it does is that it takes our value that goes into here. It then does a couple of things to it. So it takes it and it... Well, first of all, we just want the type of what it is, although we don't really care because we don't use this thing for anything. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. There we go. This is what we're talking about, right? Remember how we did unseal.underlying argument, right? That collapses all of the nested inline blocks. We passed it, it to quoted raw. And this is where the magic starts to happen. We create a parser, and the parser parses it, and then it gives us a syntax tree. And we don't need this anymore, right? And then once we got to there, once we got to there, we realized, wait a minute, we have a syntax tree that we've built. Oh, and by the way, we actually need to implement this thing. So that's what we did up here, where we actually implemented the syntax tree. And then we created this syntax tree, and then we realized, wait a minute, you can't return a value from a macro, right? What gets returned from a macro? Take a look. What gets returned? Expression, right? You can't return a value from a macro. You have to return code from a macro, right? Which means that the code that is inside of this thing, the actual syntax tree, then needs to be turned into code. So then we realized we have to take all of the possible things that this could be, and then we have to recursively build up an actual tree of code for what this thing is. So that's what we did here. And it's actually pretty darn repetitive. The idea is, okay, 
If it's this, then return this, right? If it's an entity, then return the code that represents the fact that it's an entity. If it's something that's filtered, return the code that represents it's a filtered block. If it's an identifier, return the code that represents the fact that it's an identifier. If it's a property, return the code that represents its property, right? Whatever's quoted is actual code. And if it's something else, throw an error. Boom. Sorry. No can do. Right? Now here's the trick, right? Let's say that we actually have this filter, right? How did we get a filter? Well, if you use the filter DSL, which is right here, right? Then in the parser, you'll get parsed into a filter, right? That's how we get this filter object here. So if you have a filter, well, then you need to actually parse the stuff inside, right? Because you can potentially have filters inside filters or this entity, right? That's what typically this thing is going to be, right? Because it's typically going to be this thing that's inside of this thing, but potentially not, right? Because you can do dot .filter, dot .filter, right? Then you have two filters inside of each other. We can actually even see that. P2, P dot is sober. All right, let's give that a shot. We can see if that works in a second. Um, did I screw up somewhere? I don't think so. But anyway, so we, we realize that we need to recursively take this thing and convert it to code. Let's actually try it. Let's see, because this, this should definitely work. Let's see. DDD. Da -da 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 -da. Compile. Right, and again, because this is running in compile time, it should print our syntax tree during compile time. And voila, there we go. And blah, 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 and uh, lots of, lots of confusing stuff if you don't know what to look for. So let's skip over this thing here, then just let's have a look at what's going on here. Unfortunately, there's no clearly simple way to clean this up, although somebody probably should write a way to clean this up. But anyway, let's, uh, let's manually clean this up. Um, da -de 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 -de. Let's get rid of all the packages. Get rid of all the dot fly. Okay, there we go. That seems more reasonable. Filter. Ooh, what did I say? Filter in filter. DDD, DDD. And voila. There we go. And this type of scripture we don't care about. Right? There's the tree that we got back. Right? Because we did two layers of filtering. Now, 
Let's see if we can uh, if we can print this thing out a little nicer, a little nicer, right? We can technically print it inside of here, right? There's nothing stopping us from doing that. So let's do io. Let's do io. Yeah, util dot messages dot qprint will ast and then we also need to do that return as a string that we can print so let's um let's do that again we have to change the file in order to in order to force it to recompile if it's compiled successfully before and up oh, there we go it printed it out for us. Um, filter of filter. It's actually, in fact, you know what? This is everything else that we have after that. It's a little redundant. Let's just recompile. And, um, yeah, I guess that, uh, I wonder if we can get it to print even a little more nicely. Let me just do keyprint.apply. This is, I'm just trying different ways to pretty print this thing. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's even nicer. Okay. Well, here we go, right? We did filter of filter. Let's get rid of the first filter and then recompile. Okay, see? Before we had two filters, now we have one filter. Oh, let's add another field. Let's add another oh ah, why do we click in there? Let's add let's add another Boolean field is sober. Let's say let's say um let's say is Russian. <laughs> right? That those two are inversely proportional. Or let's see, that's very inversely correlated. Right, so let's filter on is sober and is Russian. Well, there we go. See, we have a filter on the inside and a filter on the outside. And then all the way at the inside is an entity. And again, we can take out the filter, the secondary filter, right? And we just have one layer of filtration, right? Or we can add potentially more layers of filtration. Let's say is human, not filter, p2, p dot is human. And now we'll have three layers of filtration. One, two, three. All right, so we've we were we're already parsing different syntax trees. And we're generating different syntax trees. Now these things eventually go through an engine that will become SQL. Um again, all of that stuff is built already. I'm not gonna go into that stuff yet. But at the end, I'll show you how to how to make this thing into uh, into an SQL query. But that's not that's not where I want to focus on quite yet. Um, does this make sense so far? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. So next up. We can go into writing a binary operator, um, sort of, we'll do that a little later to finish this whole thing up. But what I want to go into today is I want to go into the next sort of logical step, which is the following. What we should be able to do, what we should be able to do is we should be able to take, by the way, notice that this thing is like red in random places. This just, it, 
messes up this way, so don't, don't pay attention to that. What we should be able to do is that we should be able to do something like inline def q1 equals to quote query person, sorry, q, right? We should be able to take this thing, right, and then apply the filters, right? We should be able to do that. Right? That's the whole point, that we can continue to do this many, many times. And we can build up queries this way. Now, the trouble is, well, how exactly do we do that? Now, what is this going to be? Right? What, is, what is the type of this thing? What's it? actually loads and tells us. What is the type of this thing going to be? Well, I can tell you. This is going to be quoted of query of person. Now, what are we actually going to see? What are we actually going to see when we take this quoted of query of person and then put it inside the next block. Remember, let's actually comment this out again. Well, what we're going to see, we can print out. Right? What we're actually going to see is this whole giant block of stuff here. Now, again, you have to understand what parts of this to not pay attention to, because you actually don't need to pay attention to most of it. But the point is that, so, don't look at this stuff, because this is all type ascription and applying types, applying type parameters, so you don't really care about that. Um, actually, well, up to here. Right? This is what's important. Remember what we did right here. So, what's going to come back? What's going to come back? And we can actually look at, we can actually look at it, uh, right? Uh, this, right? This here, we distilled to just that. Now, because that's what this stuff is up here, right? I'm printing from the print macro, if you remember. Um, if you remember right, what I do is I do expert.show, which is gonna be the, which is gonna be the, um, which is this stuff here, right? This is, this is, uh, this is the code, and this is the syntax tree of the code. So that's, so this is just the more complicated version of this here. But anyhow, so, we can actually look right here, right? This is what we returned. And we can look at what we returned for a particular syntax tree. This is what we returned when what was passed in was this, right? This is what we passed in. This is what came back out. So let's look at what's going on here. Right? We passed in this filter. Oh, wait, no, sorry. There are two layers of filtering here. Um, let's... Let's... Um, Okay, I'm just going to tell you the, the outer filter here doesn't count anymore because we removed it. This is what's going to come back out. Should we check it? We can double check it, actually. Um, okay, there we go. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Only one layer of filtering. So, here's what happened. Here's what happened. This is what came in. This is the code that came out. All right, this is the actual, this is the actual lot. Uh, Hello. Sorry about being late. Hello? Everything all right? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, cool. So this is, this is the Scala code that actually came out, right? This is the Scala code that represents the assembly of the syntax tree that represents this statement right here. But again, this is, this is the Scala code. This is code, right? We have to lift everything. So what came out of here was code. Now, what will actually, let's say that we took this thing, let's say we took this thing, and in fact, instead of doing something sophisticated like this, we just passed Q back into the quotation, right? That's the same as that, right? If we just passed Q back in, what would we see? Well, we would see what we just printed from here, right? And that would be this sort of big gargantuan kind of thing here. That's what we would see. Now let's let's actually go through this because this is not this is not as horribly sinister as it looks. So this, remember everything that says typed, we can just ignore. This, we basically have to figure out a way to parse out because we don't care about typed, right? Remember that typed is a type ascription, right? Remember that at the end of this, there was this colon, and this guy here, right? That's what this, that's what that typed thing was that we just removed, only there were two layers of them. So again, we actually don't care about that at all. We just need to parse it out in some sort of way. Now, here's the important part. Here's the important part. Next up, there's, okay, there's quoted. Quoted dot apply. That's what this statement is. Now, this thing here, ah, this is garbage. Um, this thing here, quoted dot apply. Now, okay, this is apply. The other thing that you do, and this is like, there isn't really a type here yet until you actually apply it. So that's going to be that. And this is going to be that. All right, what this basically says, type apply basically says, okay, take quoted dot apply. Right, so this is a select. We've taken quoted, we've done the dot apply, or we've selected apply from it, and we're doing type apply, and there's this long type here, blah, 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 that really all that it represents is org.stuff.this.person, blah, 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 right? That... This, this thing here is just that thing there. Okay, well, that's not very scary looking anymore. Okay, so we just typed applied on that. And now the rest of the stuff inside, right? Where we had, where we had, uh, let's look at what else is inside. Filter on filter on entity ident prop. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, again, we don't need that. That doesn't exist anymore. 
more. All right, all of this stuff. Let's shorten it down. This stuff here. So now we actually take a ply of this thing. And again, we really don't care about this type of ply so long as we can just figure out a way to ignore it. So this is really just that. And what we care about is, a, is this, right, taking this thing that's here, which is actually this here, and we need to figure out what the heck to do with this. So this is essentially the tree that's going to be passed inside when we actually say, quote, Q. So when we say, quote, Q, this thing here is actually going to be shoved back in this thing here. Right, so then what's going to happen is we're going to take it, shove it back in here, and it's going to go into here. And then what's the next thing that happens? Well, it goes into this parser over here. Right, that's the next thing that happens right here. It's going to go into this parser over here. Okay. So... This code, which, by the way, represents this syntax tree, right? This is the code that represents this syntax tree. Sorry, let me just paste this into a different sublime text. Okay. Here, I'm going to put it in here. There we go. So this syntax tree became this Scala code. How did it become this Scala code? Right? Entity of person. Okay. Entity of person, then that's entity dot apply. Right? Select ident entity dot apply to the list of arguments of person. Right? That's this thing there. Right? Ident.apply on P. This thing there. And then this whole nice long thing here, property of ident of P dot is sober. Okay, there we go. Property dot apply. And the list of arguments, P dot is sober. Okay. So... What happens? What, what, what's going on here? What exactly happened? Right? Well, we had this nice little syntax tree that we generated, and we even printed it just a second ago. Right? We just printed it. Where did we print it from? Well, we printed it from here. Right? We have this nice little syntax tree that we've generated, and we've lifted it back into some very ugly Scala code, which is this syntax tree. Okay, now we have to do something with it. So let's, uh, let's recap. Um... So, let's recap. Um, what 
have whiteboard. Okay. Nah. Oh, is everybody seeing this? Okay. Everybody seeing this? Yep. So let's recap for a second. What did we have? Right? So originally we had some code. We had quote. We had this. Oh, wait. We had this quotation here. Right? And we had this query inside, etc. And what happened? Well, we took this thing, we passed it into the parser, right? And then the parser turned it into this object filter, right? And that was the entity which had, which was person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so we passed it into the parser. So then what happened? Well, what happened then was that this nice little syntax tree we then passed into the lifter, what color should I make that? We then pass that into the lifter, and the lifter turned that thing into the code that represents this, which was, well, this stuff over here, right? This is actually, right, this is filter, but really this is fill, this is actually dot apply, right? There's like dot apply function here. Right, so this turned into select ident filter apply right, the apply is the name of the function, and then we're applying that on, well, this guy here, right? And that's going to be on list of, this is actually a string here, person, right, that, etc., etc., etc. Right? So when we actually, um, let's see, filter.apply, oh no, sorry, uh, I'm wrong. This is more than that, right? This is actually, let's, um, let's make this into a slightly different color and then we can see it more quickly. Uh, should we be seeing the whiteboard? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, there, right? Ah, sorry. Let me back up for a second, right? So we had this nice thing here, which we then passed, right? And then this code here represents that. So it's apply, so it's filter dot apply, right? That's what, um, right? There's like a dot apply in here. There's a dot apply right there, 
right? Because Scala hides it, but that's that's what's there. And so then we're translating, we're trans, or let's, let's actually, let me redo this, right? What's filter? What's filter, right? It, well, really it's, I'll just add this. Really it's filter.apply, right? And really it's, really it's entity, Change the color. Okay, there we go. Real is entity dot apply. No, nope, that's not the right color. Or is it the right color? Or no, that's the right color. Entity dot apply. Right. So what is that going to be? Right. What is this going to be? Well, that's going to be select. from what ident of filter select the apply method from there and then apply the apply method on some list of arguments and what is that list of arguments going to be well that's going to be this thing inside of there right that list of arguments is just going to be select of entity select what the apply function or we can just go app oh and then we're applying it on this thing here so let's take this let's move it out here right and then this is going to be apply on this constant person right well actually it's going to be constant of literal blah 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 right that's what that's going to be and then there's going to be more stuff afterward Right, there's going to be more stuff that happens later. So that's what we just did here. Right, we took this tree here. We took this tree here. And let's zoom out a little bit. Can we zoom out? Let's zoom out a little bit. There, put that there, put that there. Right, so we took this quoted of query, we parsed it into this tree, and then we lifted the actual quill AST, right, because that's what that's what this thing here, this is the quill AST, right? And we lifted the quill AST back out to the Scala AST. So now, and then finally what we did was we took this whole Scala AST and we then just took it and plugged it into this quoted thing. Right, we plugged it into quoted. Right? So, this is ultimately what came out, right? This is, this is what we got out, out of 
this thing there. This is what Q is. Right, so Q is actually quoted of query of person. Right, so this is what this thing here is. Now here's the thing. What we want to do, here's what we did. We said Q is equal to that, right? And then we did inline. We said inline Q is equal to that, or inline def, right? Because we want to store this syntax tree. And then here's what we did. We then took this thing, and then we then passed it back in a second time. Right, we then passed it back into a second quotation. Well, this is getting interesting. So what we've basically done here, what we've basically done here is our first splice. That's what this thing actually is, right? Because what we can do, what we can do, is we can, we assume that what we could do is something like dot filter, right? And then do the next round of filtration. And what we expect this thing here, this quotation here to be, is we expect it to be a query. We expect it to be a query of person, right? Because that's what we did here. That's what we did. That's what we did up here, right? That's where we started. We started with quote of some kind of query of person that we then filtered in some way or something else, but this was a quoted of query of person. And then we expect to be able to filter this thing when we get back, right? And that's what we sort of expect to be able to do here. Right? We expect to be able to continue and do that. Okay, but here's the thing. This Q over here, this Q over here is not a query of person. This Q over here is actually a quoted query of person, and where query actually, in this case, is the type. It's not a query of person, it's a quoted query of person. Well, here's the problem. You cannot do a dot filter on a quoted query. Oh, wait, why isn't this? Why did my change come? Oh, what? Sorry. Now my change is not coming through at all. Oh, okay, now it's coming through again. Sorry, technical difficulties, right? You cannot do a filter on a quoted query of person, right? You can't do filter on this. You have to do filter on that, right? You could do query of person, right? You could do this. You cannot do that. That doesn't make sense. And then, of course, you need to take this thing over here and you need to quote it. So here's the thing. 
in our next quote, which is right here, well, here's the thing. What we need to figure out how to do is we need to figure out, let's take this thing. What we've done effectively is that we've taken this thing here and we've shoved it into this big quote block. The problem is that this thing here that this thing here that we've shoved into the quote block, we need to take this thing and we actually need to turn it into this thing, right, in order to be able to call filter on it and other functions. So, what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to turn it into that. Now, here's the interesting part, right? Remember how when we had something like the dot quote in the Scala code, right? And then we had we had something like, we had something like, let's say, we had something like quoted, right? And then we needed to have some kind of AST that we needed to put inside of there, right? And this was of type AST. But what we actually had is we didn't have type of AST we had some kind of expression which was an expert of AST. What did we do? How did we get from expert of AST to AST? Right? How, how, did, we, how did we get from here to there so that we could splice it in? Well, remember this dollar sign? What was the dollar sign? What was the critical thing that this operator was? Only this is not, this is like Scala object. You know, this, this might as well, this might as well be, this might as well be blah. This might as well be class blah that takes some AST. Right? We actually don't care. The point is that in this situation, right, this is what we did. This is what we did over here. Lifted quill AST. How did we get from AST, which was AST, to lifted quail AST, which was expert of AST. And our would tell us the type of this thing if it was a little less beta. But anyway. Right? How how did we get from AST to expert of AST? Right? That's what that's what we're actually pondering here, right? How do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we go from an expression of something to that thing? And that's sort of the same issue as we've got going over here, right? We're taking a quoted thing, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to take it 
and we're trying to turn it back into the query, the content that exists inside. What is this? What kind of operation is this? Anyone? This is like uh, the containers, like the, the cocoons we were talking about. Yes. A, a while ago, right? Yes. Is, uh, is it sealed and unsealed? Close. Very close. Here's another hint. What does this dollar sign do? Wait, aren't we talking here about liftables and unliftables? Yes. So like and yes, 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 yes. So, so one of them has to be lifting and the other one has to be unlifting. Yes. What's another name for unlifting? Let's, uh... I don't know. Huh? Can't recall. What? I cannot uh, recall. Let's actually, let's actually define in more global terms what we're talking about here. Let's do light blue. All right. What, what is this? All right. When we are going from a quoted of foo to foo, or potentially, potentially, we could go the opposite way. We could go from, oops, we can go from foo back to quoted foo, right? That's, you can go the other way. Well, we've already explored how to go the other way. That was lifting. Right, so from foo to quoted foo, right, this, this was, this was what we did originally here. That's what quote does, right? This all, what is this, what is this stuff? What is this, right? This is query of person. This is query of person, right? Quoting this thing brings us to quoted of query of person. So this is what we call, this is what we call lifting, or quoting. Now, in actual, like, Scala terminology, we have a very similar kind of thing. We have foo to expert of Foo, right? This is basically the same thing. We call it quoting or potentially lifting. Same thing. Right? This, right, we call quoting slash lifting. They mean the same darn thing. Now, what happens when you're going the other way? What happens when you're going the other way? What happens when you're going from 
from quoted of foo back to foo. Or in, in uh, Scala expressions land, you're going from you're going from expert of foo to foo. What are we doing here? What is this? What is this operation? Unlifting, unquoting. Un, uh, unlifting or unquoting. Yes, yes, precisely. And this actually has a third synonym. It's called splicing. So this is unlifting slash unquoting slash splicing. Same thing, unlifting Unquoting, ah. splicing. Wait, Alex, just to confirm, though, it's only called quoting and quoting if it if it actually has quoted, though, right? Um, in Scala, it's called unlifting. In Quill, it's called unquoting. In principle, they mean the same thing. They just use different words to describe it. But yes, the in Scala generally calls it unlifting. Uh, cool. So the point is that what we need to do, what we need to do, right, in the beginning, In the beginning, after we parsed our code, what we did... Why can't I move this? Do this a second ago. Oh, I could twist it. Oh, okay, fine. There we go. Okay. Let's put that over there. Let's put that over there. Sorry, one second. Okay, there we go. Right, so this, on the left-hand side, this is Quill. And on the right-hand side is Scala. Same thing here, right? This is Quill, and this is Scala. And we have to deal with both kinds of trees. So, the point is that once we've gotten all the way through the process of starting with the quote, and then taking it and parsing it, and then taking that and returning it to a Scala tree, we then need to take this Scala tree and convert it back, all the way back to a quill tree. That's the point. So we need to, or let me, ah. Sorry, I wasn't zoomed in on the right spot. So, as I said a second ago, right? In the beginning, we had a quotation. 
we took that quotation and we transformed it into a quill tree. We then took that quill tree and turned it back into a scholar tree so that we could return it back to an external variable. We then took that variable and we quoted it again, which means what we need is we need to get back this original quill tree right here. We need to get this thing and plug it back in. Right? That's what we need to do when, we, when we've gone all the way through the cycle. We need to get back the tree that we've originally generated. So if it's a quoted block, if it's a quoted block, right, this whole thing, this whole thing here, this, this filter part, this filter part, and everything that might come after it, what we need to do potentially is we need to parse it, right? We need to run it through the parser, and we need to figure out what the heck to do with it. But everything inside of a quoted block we have already parsed. Inside of this thing is the syntax tree that we have originally produced over here. What we need to do, however, is because it is no longer in this form, excuse me, because it is no longer in this form, but rather it is in this form, right? We have no choice. We're dealing in Scala, so we have to return Scala syntax trees because that's what Scala knows how to handle, right? We're not writing our own programming language here, right? So this is the form that it's in. What we need to do is take this form that it's in over here when it, back into, when it went back into the quote and transform it all the way back to that. Which is essentially what it means to go from quoted of foo back to foo, right? Splicing. This is what we call splicing. Or the opposite of quoting, which is unquoting. So what we need to write is the capability to unquote a tree. Okay. So we have to find an unquote of a tree. Now, from a pragmatic purpose, where is this whole thing? thing going to go into, right? Practically speaking, practically speaking, let's take this whole thing and let's move it down, right? Practically speaking, what's going to happen when this quoted block here, when this quoted block here takes this when this quote function here, right, when this quote macro takes a quoted block, takes this quoted block, what is it actually going to do? Well, it's our code. We can make it do anything we want. But here's the thing. It's going to go into the parser. Right? It's going to go into the parser. Now, here's the thing. This quoted statement here... Oops, sorry. So this, this quoted statement here, it's going to go into the parser. Now... If there's other stuff like, say, filters, you know, or multiple filters, we need to parse those. But the parser, right, so it can parse, right, there's going to be like a case for filter. There's going to be a case for filter. And so what we need to do is we need to... We need to um, we need to have handling 
practically speaking, in the parser to be able to deal with this quoted block. And what needs to happen here, and what needs to happen here is, what needs to happen here is that this, when the parser actually gets this quoted block, right, and inside of this quoted block is going to be this whole Scala tree right here that we actually shoved into it, what we then need to do is then pull this out is we then need to pull this thing out and then unquote it which will give us the actual AST from this from this thing right because again this out this won't actually be remember that this has already been turned into AST right so this is actually going to be this is actually going to be filter of well it's going to be the same thing it's going to be the same thing that we produced over here right this thing here this thing right here is the same thing that we're going to get back out over here, right? So once we unquote it, we will get the original filter tree we're going to get the original filter tree that we produced oh sorry how do i paste ah sorry i do not know how to use this product correctly yet ah okay we're going to get the original filter tree that we had in the very beginning. So that's, that's what we need to get. And so basically what's going to happen is that the parser, that the parser needs to call, needs to detect that it's getting a quoted block, and then from the quoted block, pull out the Scala AST inside the quoted block, and then be able to reconstruct the original AST that we produced when we parsed the thing that created that quoted block, which is this thing right here. Can I select it over here? Let's see. Where's the lasso? Where's the lasso tool? Oh, inking mode. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, no. Lasso? That's not a lasso. Okay. Not doing what I want. Anyway, does all of this make sense? Yeah, I think so now. Any questions? Um, can you just explain again why we need to get the original tree once we're already this deep into it? Okay. So, um, let's try to, let's see, let's try to do this a little bit more conceptually because I might have gotten lost in the details. So initially we started with initially we started with some DSL. Right? We then took that DSL and we parsed it. We then parsed it into an AST. 
Here's the thing, though. We can't take that AST and put it back into the Scala code without lifting it, right? So you need to actually lift it. So we lifted it into the AST, right? We lifted it into the expression, and that's what came out back into the variable that was our inline. Well, here's what needs to happen. We then took this variable, we then took this variable, and we plugged it back in to another quote. Which means that what we got in this other quote was this expression here. And so here's the thing, right? This quote can potentially have other things, like say another filter. Well, we need to figure out when we're computing what this quote is, right? Because eventually we need to write this back out again, let's say Q1. We need to repeat this process, which means that eventually we need to have an expression, a new expression that we will then write back out again. The trick is this Q here has already been parsed. So this Q here is actually a quoted, right, and it has this AST inside. Only it's not an AST, it's an expression of an AST. That's what we got from here. So what needs to happen is we need to take this thing here, we need to turn it back into an AST, so that we can then plug it back into here, apply this filter, and then get back the total AST, which is the result of all of these things, and then continue to splice it back out. So, what, what's going on is that we need to actually, we need to actually get this original AST. Because this original AST is what is encoded in this Q variable over here via this container or this sort of cocoon. Another way, another way, I guess, another way to say it is this. Originally, what we had, originally what we had when we had a quotation block, originally what we had is some code, right? What we had is some code. What we then did was we took this code and we transformed it into a quill tree. Right? And then what we did was we took this tree and we, let's say, we, or we turned it into a Scala tree. So you can imagine, you can imagine there's this like, there's this like Scala cocoon. There's this Scala cocoon that we sort of, that we sort of like wrapped around it. Right? We then took this, we then took this, uh, the Scala cocoon, and then we put this thing into this sort of quoted thing. We put this into a quotation. Right? We then put this, so we wrapped it into this Scala cocoon, and we put it into this quotation, which is itself in a Scala cocoon, but details, right? So then once we, once we got that, once we got that, we then took this thing back out, we then took this thing back out, and returned it to the user in this variable that we called Q. Now the next thing that happened is that we had a quotation of some Q. 
code, potentially. And then eventually this Q thing that we just produced. And then potentially some other code. Well, okay. We need to turn this code into a Q tree. We need to turn this code into a, a quill tree. Well, what about this thing here? Well, when we pass this thing here, we can't just parse it the way we normally would, because it's inside of this quotation thing. Okay, so we have to take it out of this quotation cocoon. In fact, you can think of you can think of quotation as like a second cocoon. Right? So we put it into the quotation cocoon. Okay. So in so it's inside of this little quotation cocoon. And then inside of this quotation cocoon is it's then inside of this Scala cocoon. So it's inside of these two cocoons. Right? So then we have to take it and we have to pull out this thing from the quotation cocoon. And now it's in the Scala cocoon. Okay. So then once we've pulled it out and it's the Scala cocoon, well then we actually need to take it and pull it out of the Scala cocoon so that we actually have a quill tree, right? Which we can then which we can turn into a quill tree, and then all these quill trees, we can then potentially take all of these guys and then do the same darn thing again, right? We can then take them, put them back into the Scala cocoon, take them, put them back into the quotation cocoon, and then write them back out into the next variable. And we keep on doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this until eventually what we do is we pass it into the run function and then it generates our SQL. So the point is, the whole point of this is that you can imagine outside, right, there's this whole process here there's this whole process here, right? This is the quote macro, right? This, oops, this over here, this is the quote macro, right? Out here, out here, right? This is sorry, out here, beyond this line, right? This is the, um, the cold, hard razor blade of life. This is the reality. This is the outside. Right, what is this? What is this? Where are you? Well, when you're inside of quote land here and here, you're inside of Quill, right? But out here, you are inside of Scala land, right? This is Scala AST, right? So in order to be able to survive the cold, harsh winter of the outside of Quill, the, uh, the, uh, the compiler, the land of the Scala compiler, Right? You need to actually transform your pretty little quill tree into a Scala tree. And you need to put it into this Scala cocoon, which you then need to put inside of this quotation cocoon. And then once it's inside of these cocoons, can you take it and pass it outside to the cold, harsh reality of life? Now, once you're you've done that, right, once you've passed it into the cold, harsh reality of life, and you want to invoke the next transformation, well, then you need to take it out, 
and you need to pull it out of its cocoon over here, right? You need to pull it out of its little cocoon so then you can continue to work with it. So then that's sort of the point. We need to take stuff, we need to wrap it into a cocoon, send it back out. Grab it in, remove the cocoon, get the tree inside, continue to transform it. Once we're done with that, wrap it back into the cocoon, send it out again. So, so parse it, send it out. Grab it back in, parse the parts, parse the new parts. The parts that are into the that are in the cocoon, we take out of the cocoon. Right? Grab it in, work with it again. And then once we're done with all that, take the whole result. Take the whole result, which is again over here, then wrap it back into the cocoon, send it back out. Does that make sense? Yeah, to me it does. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that made sense to me. Okay. So, what we need to do, what we need to do... Now, we've already, we've already figured out how to wrap this thing in a cocoon. We've already figured this out, right? That's what, that's what lifting does. Right? That's what this thing does. This thing makes our cocoon. What we need to figure out is how to uncocoon it. Right? We need to we need to take this. We need to take this this uh this this um this harsh crystallized AST and sort of and melt its external barriers that it's erected in order to be able to survive the the cold hard realities of life. And we have to melt its exterior, its exterior issues and complexes in order to be able to get at the true thing inside. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot, though. I'm, I'm... You can tell I'm stretching these metaphors just a bit, but uh, but anyway, um, anyway. So now, so we've taken this quoted block, right? We've taken this quoted block, which is this whole thing, this whole crystallized jaded thing here that uh, that's that's like very 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 um very very defensive and etc cetera, etc cetera, but it can survive the the cold hard winter right well then we need to take it and turn it back into our nice scala ast okay well we need to match on this so we need to write the unlifter. But first of all, first of all, let's parse it, right? It, the first place that this thing is going to go is into the parser, right? This thing is going to come in through the quoted argument here. It's going to go into here, and then it's going to go into the parser. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to parse it, right? What's quoted? It's just this thing here. So, okay, we can parse it. Let's parse it. Case quoted, and it's going to be dot apply, right? And it's going to have some sort of type. And um, then you're going to have the stuff inside, right? That's going to be the syntax tree inside the quotation block. Okay. So, right, that's going to be this thing. So then, let's pull, well, we can take this thing back out, but for now, 
let's just, uh, we don't need this now, but what we should do here is that, let's just make sure that we've gotten this right and this thing is actually being matched. So, the thing that you typically want to do when you're just checking, okay, have I matched it? So match it, and then like immediately throw an error. Or, you know, yay, we matched it. And then, fine, we don't care about it like that at that point. Right, so we actually match the, we match the expression. Now, da -da 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 oh yes, 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 one other thing. Notice how there's like a typed around here and there's a type apply and some other stuff. So what I typically do, let's see, do we have, so what, one of the things that we typically need to do is if something is a type of something, we just need to walk inside. So what I usually do is this unseal typed um, and then that thing is going to have some arguments inside. Typically, it's going to be inside. Um, don't care about that. Underscore is fine if you're doing this. If you're inside of one of these, I don't think underscore will work or it's problematic. So just beware. I could just do don't care. Um, although whatever, it's not the best way to do it. But anyway, da -da 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 -da. actually no, let's let's do underscore. Um. So we need to do that. Now, let's see if we can, let's see if we can, let's see if we can grab it like that. Let's see if this will work. Um, and we don't need that there. Let's compile it. Let's see if it works. And no, we have a problem. Uh, oh, oops. Right, I can't just return the inside. I need to continue to parse it. My bad. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I have to go. I'll, uh, I'll watch this tomorrow. Okay. okay. Good night. Sounds good. Talk to you later. Um... Okay, what did we have here? Uh, oh, oops. When you do it like that, you need to seal it back up. Right, because AST parse this thing here, if it loads and actually tells me what it is, this thing here is the term. What we need, what AST parse needs, and you can actually take a look, right, it needs an expression. How do you go from an expression to a term? Well, you just seal it back up. Okay, what did we do wrong now? Um, ah, ha, 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 ha. Now this is where it gets interesting. Notice how filter, right? Ooh, what did I say before? Filter is not, filter is not a function that you can do on quoted, filter is a function that you can do on the thing that's inside, right? Filter you can do on query, not on quoted. Okay, so let's deal with that later. Let's at least pull out, oops, let's, let's, uh, this, excuse me, this part here. Right, let's deal with this part later. Let's at least pull out the thing in the quotation. Okay. That's confusing. Okay. Um, Quillius needs a forward reference over the. Um, oh, did I print it wrong? Did I print it wrong? 
Um, oh, whoops. This thing, okay, this variable is not there. What I actually want to print is this variable. And what I really want to do is I just want to show what this thing is to make sure that I've got it. That original quill AST variable that I put there actually doesn't come into existence until here. Right? It doesn't exist when we declare this thing. So it's like, oh, this is a forward reference. No, we just actually made a dumb mistake and used a variable that doesn't exist yet. Okay, whatever. Um, there we go. Oh, wait. Why did this... This should have blown... Oh, right! Ha 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 ha. Remember how we had this whole crazy thing where we spliced a variable and we were printing from inside the macro and nothing was happening? That's because if we have a variable that we don't actually use, Java just, like, removes it completely. This is actually, we're getting into the internals of how the Java compiler works. There's a variable that we don't use, and there's some function that we used, like that, to compute the variable, the JVM removes it entirely, so we're not even doing anything. But that's why we need to actually do something with this variable in order for the JVM to compute it. Now, yay! We matched. We actually hit this condition here. So that's good. So we actually got this, uh, this Scala tree, or the Scala cocooned Quail AST. So what we need to do is we need to uncocoon it and write the unlifter. Well, what does the unlifter, how does the unlifter work? Well, it's just a mirror image of the lifter, right? Object unlifter, def apply. So, mirror image, instead of AST, it's expr of AST, and it returns AST, right? Mirror image. Okay. Now, let's see entity name which we expect to be a constant. Ooh, but it's a constant, which means we need to unseal it. Which means we need to unseal it. And once we unseal it, let's see how we did that. Um, once we unsealed it, Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Uh, one second. Unsealed constant, I believe. Constant. Name is a string. Okay. So we got the tree, and now we just return entity. Okay. The rest are very similar. But okay, let's let's see. Let's um let's say we have okay, whoops. Expert okay, we're matching and stuff. In each one is a case. Now um next up we have we have filter. what's inside. Okay, so this is going to be this is going to be the next round of AST. 
is going to be inside of here. This is going to be an alias. Let's see. Um, alias is going to be alias is going to be is is going to be an identifier, right? Because what practically what do we expect to see inside of here? What do we expect to see inside of filter block? We expect to see something like that, right? And then let's say let's say something like property. is sober. That's what we expect to see inside of a filter. This is the first part, query. The second part is the ident. The third part is this property here. Let's just do dot 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 for now because We'll, we'll get to this in a second, but let's do the others first. Case, let's see, ident. In a ident, we expect to see, um, we expect to see, again, a constant inside, so let's seal it name string and then this is going to be ident of name property let's look at property um we expect to see an ident here Or no, actually, this is what the property, what's the definition of property, right? This is, this is, uh, this could be an ident p, but if it's, let's say, let's say, you know, person dot name dot first name, right, can also be property of property, right? So then it could be, it could be p. person, name, first name. So it could be that, but usually, usually it's that. Usually it's something like that. Right, usually it's that, so okay. Inside, and that's gonna be an expression of AST. Right, this is going to be, right, in of property, the actual definition is going to be inside AST, name, which is going to be a string. Right, so this inside here is going to be an AST. Okay, that works. Um, so that's going to be expert of AST, which means we can just... On lifter apply, right? Continue the this works recursively, so inside. Oh, and then what's the rest? What's gonna be in here? Um and do, 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 do. oh sorry, I forgot. That's kind of important. Um Unseal, right? This is also going to be a constant. Name string. Okay. So we took care of property. And then let's have a catch all. Cannot unlift the tree. Okay, now since we have that, let's see if we could take care of filter. What is filter going to be? What's the definition of filter? Right, filter is the inside of the filter, which we saw could be multiple things, right? Because you can have a filter in a filter. Right, and it's an ident. 
And then again, there's there's uh, there's more stuff right there. There's this thing, or potentially other stuff. So there's body, right? The filter body, which is also another AST. So really, what we have to do here is we have to take. We just have to call it recursively. So val, let's call it query AST. ID AST and property. So let's see, val query, right? And all that is is unlifter dot apply. And again, we just do unlifter. Unlifter of query AST. Val ID, right? And of course, query is going to be AST. ID is going to be ident unlifter of id ast and then property ast and then finally once we have all of that we can construct a filter now by the way um in the actual quill code base these are going to be much more compact because if I would write out every single one on its own line like that, there would be the code would literally be three times as long. So I'm keeping it more compact, but this is this is what it boils down to. So here's our unlifter. Here's our unlifter. So once we've got our unlifter, we then apply we then apply the unlifter to the stuff that's inside. Inside of the ASD. And let's just print it for the heck of it. All right, and the unlifted, right, that of course is gonna be the AST. Right? That is going to be our, our pure, uncocooned soul of the previous syntax tree that we've generated. Let's see if we could compile it. And a bunch of errors. Oh, yes. Oops. Right, entity.unseal. Right, unseal is not an actual Scala tree. It's a method that we created which means we have to do dollar signs, right? Because this is this quoted thing. This is like a special thing, right? This, this is going to be, this is going to be Scala code. Unseal is not Scala code. Unseal is just a method that we wrote up here. Anyway, does that make sense, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Da, 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 da. Um, type must be fully defined. Why is this complaining? I don't know why this is complaining. Um. Let's see, where's entity? Oh, wait, entity is... Unseal constant name. Does this have to be string? That makes no sense. Constant cannot be used in as an extractor because it lacks. Oh, wait, what? Sorry, one second. Oh, oops. Not, this is the wrong constant. 
constant is something that we've defined in our Quill AST. What we need to use constant is we need to use constant from the um, from the uh, from the Quill AST, and that I believe is in here. That's what we're getting from. Da -da 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 -da. Constant. T constant. I believe. I think it's that. T constant, T constant, T constant. Let's see if that works. Um, okay. We're good to go there. Oh, unlifter. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Found org of stuff of AST, but requires org of stuff of ident. Okay, okay, okay. So the unlifter expects to have a type of AST, but it's really a type of ident. And that makes sense, because this is ident. But ident... Is just an is just an implementation of AST, right? It extends AST, or it should, yeah, it extends AST, and it looks like ID AST, um, which means that expert of AST is not the same as expert of ident, which is a little tricky. Because now we're getting into covariance and contravariance, which means that it's not just expert of AST, it's expert of anything that extends AST. Let's see if we can pull it off like that. I don't know if that'll work, but let's give it a shot. Um, no, that didn't seem to have worked. You type mismatch. Did I not save it? It should be a different error. Required org dot. Oh wait, no, 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 no. That that's sort of, that's fine. That's fine. Um covariance and contravariance is not something I want to go into right now. I can go into it later. Um Oh, wait, 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 right. That's the problem. It's saying, wait, no. The thing that comes out of here is an AST, right? Because that's what we did. We said it's AST, but we're trying to cast it to an ident. Okay, so in this case, we just do as instance of ident, right? We know that what comes out of an ident will be an ident, so we just cast it. Um, let's see, now. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, yes, and of course... Uh, this variable, we said, cannot unlift the tree, and this variable AST doesn't actually exist. It's expert, right? Over here, we said pprint.apply AST, and that's coming from here, right? Over here, this AST, we renamed it expert because it's not an AST, or it's an expression of AST, but whatever. So we can rename it back. And... Why is this? Oh, right. Again, forward reference. <laughs> You'd think I would have learned my lesson once. Right. We've declared parser here. We've only declared unlifter here. Now, here's the thing, right? If these objects were declared somewhere out here in the main, in the main class, then order doesn't really matter. But if you look closely... We're actually inside of, we're actually inside of this function. Right? Scala allows you to declare objects inside of functions. We can pull them out, but again, because they're pulling in things directly from this variable here, it's a little complicated. I don't want to go into it now. All that this means is that we have to declare the unlifter before we declare our parser. Right, because our parser uses our unlifter. So let's just put it up here. That should get rid of that problem. And okay. What 
Let's run the leaf now. Okay, right. By class cast exception. Oh. Okay. I guess it's not supposed to be key constant. It has to be literal of key constant. Uh, did I do an extra parenthesis or missed a parenthesis now? Unseal of literal. Okay. E constant. Literal. Unseal. E constant. Oh. Okay. I'll do this one. Literal. Unseal. Yay! Okay, good. So now we are back to, we are back to, we are back to here, right? So now let's actually reprint. Yay! We unlifted our AST. Okay. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, whoops. Yay, we unlifted our AST. Hurrah, we unlifted. Oh, wait. We made a boo boo. This should not be ident P. There should be a property of P there. Uh, we made a boo boo somewhere. Um, crop property st. Unlifter of property st. ID of filter. Uh, p dot is sober. What did we miss? Property. Oh, whoops, right, 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 we wrote this wrong. We just took this inside, we'll call it inside AST, right, and we just returned it. So we returned only this part, right? That's what this part matches, right? That's only that part. So no, we actually need to construct the whole property. Now inside... And then let's construct it. There we go. Yay, now it's correct. So we have successfully unlifted our AST and taken it out of the cocoon. Okay, so now in this case, we just proceed to write it back out and put it back into the cocoon. Okay? So, where are we doing that? We're doing that. Da 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 Where's our parser? Right there it is over here. We don't need to throw an error anymore because we've lifted things correctly. So we just return this thing. Unlifted. Yay, we're done. Actually, you don't even need to do that. Just return that. Okay. We can compile everything. And once we've returned it, we can print it out. And we can print the macro. Yay! So now we can see our whole macro again, or in fact, we can even run it. Run main. 
use simple quill do. And voila, right? We just returned it. So we've unlifted it. Now, here's the thing. Okay, it's great that we unlifted it, but the whole point is to continue to compose it further, right? That's, we want to continue to compose this, okay? So that's a slight problem because as we've seen before, the typing on this is wrong. So first of all, nothing is gonna match because we're doing a dot filter and once we're inside of the dot filter, then this whole this whole thing here, um, um, this whole thing inside here, which is um, this tree here, it's not going to match. So that's a problem. But anyway, the point is that, uh, let's actually take this out. Let's do that again. Right, the whole problem here is that um, member not found error. Uh, Q.fil. Yes, member not found error. The filter member is not found. Right, this is filter, again, is not a member of Q. Right? Remember that Q is a quoted query of person, not query of person. So it's a typing error. So what we need to do is we need to actually go from quoted of query of person to query of person. We've done that internally, but we need to tell Scala about it. Right? Just because inside of the quote macro, we can take a quoted and then unquoted, right? That doesn't mean this is still, Q is still a quoted of query of person. It's still that. So Scala doesn't know what we're doing inside of this quoted thing. It just looks at the types of the expression here and it's like, uh, you can't actually do that. Okay, so how do we pull this off? Okay, well, what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to write some kind of unquote function, some kind of unquote function here that just tells Scala, relax, we know what we're doing here. So how do we do that? Well, this is just going to be another macro. All that this is going to be is another macro. And what this macro needs to do, what this macro needs to do is take a quoted of query of person and just return query of person. And whatever goes into Q, that's what comes out of Q, and we really don't care what else happens. Okay. Well, how do we pull that off? Well, that's actually quite simple. Let's write a new macro. Inline def, unquote, t, inline, it takes a quoted, t, an actual quoted of t, and it returns t, right? We had quoted of query, now we're returning query. Equals to unquote impol, right? We're using that same pattern again. Unquote impol of t, unquoted. Okay, let's implement this. Def unquote impol. Okay, so t takes a type, although we really don't care, inline quoted, which is now a expert of quoted of t, 
and returns an x per of t. Okay. And what does it do? What does this thing do? It takes a expert of quoted of t and it returns just the t. Hmm, let's think about this for a second. Um, it takes a quoted of t and it, re it takes a quoted and just returns a t. So we know that we could pass a quoted into here, which is technically fine. So we need to do quoted dot something, right? Quoted is a quoted of query of T. And we need to call some kind of dot something method that will go to query of t. We need to call some method that is going to do that. But at the end of the day, there needs to be some kind of function or something that actually does this. Some kind of something that is able to is able to do that or some kind of some kind of whatever it is something that'll tell something that'll tell scala okay that's this is what we're going to do now so the simplest way to do that the simplest way to do that is actually to just define unquote here This is going to be, this is, uh, you know, what, what, what is unquote? What does unquote do? Well, actually, we don't really care. We don't ever actually want this to happen. The same way that we don't want any of these things Right? We're throwing illegal argument exceptions from all of them. So it's just unquote here. Okay. So all we're doing is we're just returning this sort of marker that tells us, okay, this is, this is whatever is inside. All right. Well, that means that we need to have a way to parse that. Okay, well, we could do that, right? We have a way to do that. What we could do is case. Now, we what we could do, what would be nice to be able to do is just do that right here. So when there's a quoted expression, we just say unquote it. Doesn't work, unfortunately. Uh, sort of, the second you try and get into complex you know, multiple function calls inside of parsing. It doesn't work so well. So let's just do case of something. Call it q dot unquote. Right? And that's actually going to parse what this, what this thing is. And then all we need to do in that situation is just ASD parse q. Right, because Q, what is Q going to be? Wait, what is Q going to be? What is Q? What is Q? Even the compiler doesn't know what Q is. Q, type must be fully defined. What is Q? Oh, wait a minute. We just did that right there, right? You have to define a type. Okay. So let's let's see what happens now. 
inline modifier can only be used parameters of inline methods. We made a boo boo somewhere. Um, inline def. Inline quoted. Ah, oops. It's only supposed to be in the outer. It's only supposed to be in this outer sort of header function here. Okay, and unquote is not a member of. Ah, uh, uh, oops. Oopsie. Um, quoted t dot unquote. Unquote is not a member of quoted dot expert. Did I make another boo boo? Let's see, quoted, quoted T, unquote is not a member of quoted, oh no, that, this is Scala. <laughs> quoted dot expert is actually Scala dot quoted dot expert, so that confused me for a second. But unquote is not a member of that. Why is this, why is this, oh, oops. What did I do wrong here? I returned quoted dot unquote. You can't return. You can't return actual values, right? Quoted is expert of quoted. That doesn't work. I need to actually splice it back into a tree, right? Macros return code. They don't return values. Okay, that should work. See what did I do wrong here? No implicit argument of quote. Oh, right. Some more ceremony is required for macros. This is CDX quote context. And then I need to import stuff. Aha. Okay. Looks like it all worked. Here's what we got back. Let's print it a little bit more nicely. Okay. Well, look at that. We have a full syntax tree that we have quoted that we have unquoted and that we have then spliced into another statement, right, into here. Oh, one thing remains. One thing remains. What we want to do, so right that we can take that comment out. What we want to do is we want to do dot filter on Q directly without having to do the unquote, right? That's sort of, that completes the picture. How do we do that? How do we automatically do unquote? And this is where we turn to the dark side of Scott. This is where we turn to what we call implicit conversions. So what we define is this implicit def. It is some kind of function, auto unquote. What does it do? It takes a Q, let's call it, let's call it quoted, quoted of T. And what it does, oops, is it, and it returns a T, and what it does is it does unquote of T. And it calls this method. That's actually why we decided to go this direction in the first place. 
so that we could implement something like this. What is this unquote? Let's see if we can do that. Um, oh, not found. Oh, whoops. It's quoted. Let's see if that'll work. Ooh, what happened? Um, cannot parse the tree. Da -da 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 Oh, this have to be implicit line def. Cannot parse the tree. Um, quoted of. Cannot parse the tree. Quoted. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, I remember this. Sorry, this is one other thing that let's take a look at let's take a look at this for a second. I remember this issue. It's slightly different when you start to Things are always a little different when you introduce implicit conversions. Things are always a little different. Okay. Quoted dot apply. These. I really should write an automatic thing that simplifies this tree, but anyway. Um, okay. That is quoted of query of person filter. Quoted of query of person filter of ident. And Okay, so that's over there. That is over there. What is this? Oh, you see how this is a double type description? Right there, are these two colons there. Uh, word wrap, there we go. That makes a little clear. And there's a filter in here. And there's that there. So we have a quoted of query, and there's a double, it's a double wrapper there. But that should be fine. Um that should be fine because it should be. That should be all right. Sorry, one second. I know that I um. I know that I dealt with this issue before. Where am I? There we go. I just need to see how I did this before, because um, there. I just remember there was a slight trick here that I needed to do when the conversion is implicit in order to parse the tree properly. Because what's happening right now is that the parser is being called, and it says cannot parse the tree. And there's something in there that I need to parse correctly that I'm not parsing correctly. So let's just have a quick look. Come on. Okay, okay, I just need to see the ID for a second. Um, there's the parser. Query parser. Hmm. Okay. 
type T entity query. Oh no, it's operations parser. Where's the quoted parser? Well, there's my unlifter, by the way. Um, quotation parser. No, oh, quotation can be part of those directly in line. Uh, on the left. Function parser. What was, what was the issue here? No, wasn't it. Okay, let's have a look at this. Quoted of query of person filter ident property. And this has two. But this is immediately, oh wait, oh I know what's wrong. Right, this is, uh, this is, this is two type descriptions. Remember how in order to get rid of that, we did it up in the unlifter, right, where we said, <sighs> where is this type? Unseal typed? Oh no, we we're doing that. Okay, one second. I need to. I need. I need to print out the AST. Can I print out the tree? Um. I need a little bit more information here. What? Does this have actual multi-line strings that work this way? I don't think so. Strip margin just gets rid of the part of the string that's before these brackets here. And... Let's get some more detail on this. Okay. Um, what's going on here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh! Did I forget to... Did I forget to... Expert? Expert dot unseal parse the expert. Oh, okay, okay, okay. These are they're the ha 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 ha. The thing that's inside the thing that's inside the auto unquoted. The thing that's inside the auto unquoted needs to be, um, it looks like uh, quoted, unquoted, dot apply. It looks like I need to do dot underlying argument because I need to get rid of these inline things. Um, Uh, 
So didn't I do that already? Quote.unseal that underlying argument dot seal. Thought I did that already. Why? Why is it? Auto unquote. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um does this have to be in line? I think that needs to be in line. Ah, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. Okay, whenever you're trying to do something that's in line, the argument that gets passed in also has to be in line. So, right. I forgot about that. Okay, well, there we go. We have our tree that's correctly printing out, and it's automatically unquoting, and it's automatically generating this thing. So we basically have a way to quote things and unquote them. And by the way, we can continue to compose this. Let's say Q2, Q1.filter, right? Let's say dot filter, P2P dot is human, right? And then let's do print Q2. And now it's three filters deep, right? So we, we actually can continue to compose these things as often as, as many times as we want. So we pass it in, we lift it, we unlift it, and now we have a basically functioning system of quoting and splicing. And... This, this is it. This is, uh, this is Quill in a nutshell. Um, so what you guys are, again, largely going to be working on is the parser. And this is a, a basic prototype of a parser. Um, the real one is a little bit more complex. The real quotation mechanism is a little bit more complex because there, there are other things that I haven't covered here. But this is, uh, this is it. This is basically... This is basically Quill. Um, there are a few other minor things we have to do in order to touch this thing up, but, uh, but we're there. <laughs>